The Heisman Trophy was presented on Saturday evening, and Bryce Young, of course, gets the seventh most first place votes ever, or sorry, the seventh most votes, possible points, whatever you want to call it, ever. Uh, It was kind of a landslide. I think everybody somewhat expected that after the SEC championship game. It was a pretty big blowout, and people expected Bryce Young was going to win this award. Uh, I think the the ranking of the rest of the, or the the rest of the vote getters was what more people were surprised about, right? Aiden Hutchinson ends up with the second most votes, and then Kenny Pickett came in third. CJ Stroud was fourth, and it turns out that the number five guy, Will Anderson, linebacker, edge guy from Alabama, actually had more first place votes, and then the number six guy, uh, six guy Kenneth Walker the third actually had more first-place votes than C.J. Stroud did. But when you count in the second and third-place votes, obviously that changes things. C.J. Stroud got the nod. Going forward, there will only be four guys every year at the Heisman Trophy presentation. I don't know that I like it. I would have gone with five. But if there is some kind of a budget, because this trip is paid for, if there was some kind of a budget, something along those lines, I mean, it makes sense, right? So there's only going to be four. Matt Corral was uh, seventh in this, which are the three guys that I said that I would have had in the top four for me. So, you know, Will Anderson, Kenneth Walker the third, and Matt Corral, I would have had over the number two, three, and four guys. But that's just my opinion. So very interesting, uh, all the stuff that went down. Desmond Howard, that whole debacle, if you did not pay attention There was at one point, Aiden Hutchinson was talking about the goals of the Michigan Wolverines team this season, and he talked about beating Ohio State, etc., and then realized that, wait, the quarterback of Ohio State is literally standing right behind me, and he turns around, and it gets a little awkward, like, it's funny, but what kept it even more awkward was Desmond Howard continuing to talk and talking trash about C.J. Stroud's offensive line at Ohio State and how Kenny Pickett would have been a better option (laughs) <laughs> to block for CJ Stroud than what they uh than what they actually had. It was really it was weird. It drew a lot of backlash on Twitter. A lot of people saying that Desmond Howard was uh not professional, etc. I I understand Desmond Howard went to Michigan. I get it, but it's just it, it was it was strange. And he's had a lot of these kind of incidents. I don't know. It, it would have been better had he not said anything. I'm not going to blast him too hard. For this, I mean, it's it was ridiculous. It was stupid. Whatever, right? Whatever. <laughs> there are so many different people that have put out early Heisman articles for next season, as if we have any idea what is going to happen next year. We have no idea where some of these guys are going to play. We don't know who's going to be coaching where at some of these spots. There's still a lot of dominoes, I believe, left to fall in the coaching carousel. We are still on December 12th. The fact that the majority of these jobs have already been filled, including Oregon, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit, is surprising to me. But this is, of course, uh, part of the whole early signing day mess that that has been created by the NCAA determining that they are going to have a signing day in the middle of December, right before bowl season, and amidst all this other mess, right? It's just a, a disaster. But the early Heisman articles are hilarious, right? This is the epitome of we need to produce content and understand where they're coming from. And more than likely, eventually you will probably see an article along those lines over at winningcureseverything.com. But I am, I, I, for the life of me, cannot understand why you would even be trying to figure out who will win next year. But it, it's definitely water cooler talk. Water cooler talk for sure. But cheers to Bryce Young for winning the Heisman Trophy. That is two straight for the University of Alabama. Uh, Chris isn't here to, to poo-poo on it. <laughs> we love you, Chris, of course. But uh, but I, I was happy with it. It was, you know, it, it, there were high, high expectations for Bryce Young when he enrolled from uh, modern day in, in California. When he came down to Alabama, everybody talked about him being a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback. And he proved everybody correct, right? All of the nonsense about ESPN making him out to be some kind of an underdog, while warranted somewhat, because he is undersized. He is, you know, that's one of the things that I talked about in the offseason is he's not very big. And if you're going to run him, you got to be prepared uh, to be without him 
at some point because in the SEC, that stuff will get your quarterback hurt. Luckily, it didn't. And, and he's an incredibly smart runner. He does not put himself at risk. The plays that he made this year were phenomenal, just phenomenal. He was a deserving Heisman Trophy winner, in my opinion. So cheers to it. And now we have a possibility of a two-time Heisman winner. We'll see what Alabama looks like next year. They should be absolutely loaded. They have a lot of guys that will be returning next year, including Will Anderson. But, uh, but yeah, they got some good kids. They got some good kids down there right now that are really young. Really, really young. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.